Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, presents by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. A little thought, a few moments of planning can change your whole existence. You can have security instead of worries about the future if you start now to invest regularly in United States savings bonds. For regular systematic saving, two plans have been set up for your convenience. The payroll savings plan where you work and the bond a month plan where you bank. With the payroll savings plan, you authorize your employer to set aside a certain sum each payday and invest the money in bonds for you. On the bond a month plan, for those who are not on a payroll, you authorize your bank to issue bonds to you each month and charge the purchase price to your checking account. Bonds may be redeemed any time after two months at the purchase price plus interest. Remember, savings bonds are absolutely safe and are protected against loss, theft, or destruction. Now, even better, invest more in savings bonds. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston was riding along the banks of the Klondike River on his way back to Dawson City when he sighted a rider some distance ahead along the trail. The man's horse was followed by a pack mule laden with prospecting equipment. As Sergeant Preston drew closer, the man turned his head, and the sergeant recognized him as Gil Dryden, the young mining engineer. Sergeant Preston! Gil Dryden! Come on, buggy! Get up there, fellow! <laughs> Touching spurs to his horse, the sergeant galloped forward until he drew alongside the other rider. Easy, boy. Easy, boy. Long time since I've seen you and King, sergeant. That's right, Gil. Not since last spring. How are you doing there, King? Still helping the sergeant enforce the law? <laughs> <laughs> Looks as though you've been doing some prospecting. Oh, I have. And what's more, I made a strike. Oh, mistake of claim? Well, not yet. I want to make further surveys to locate the richest possible vein. Besides, if I were to file a claim now, it would start a rush. And I don't want that to happen just yet. Not till I have lined up some backing for my own venture. You're not going to work the claim yourself. Oh, I can't without capital. The place where I made the strike is located in the mountains. It will take mining equipment to get the ore out. Then, of course, the ore will have to be refined. What do you intend to get the capital? From the Seward Mining and Development Corporation. Well, I thought you and B.J. Seward didn't get along so well. <laughs> That's true enough, Sergeant. Old B.J. is a self-made man. And he doesn't have much use for college-trained mining engineers. Not to mention the fact that he didn't approve of me courting his daughter. My financial rating wasn't satisfactory. But now that you've made a gold strike, it'll be a different story. Is that it? That's what I'm hoping, Sergeant. When he gets a look at these rich ore samples I've brought back, I think his attitude will change quite a bit. Anyway, I'll soon find out when we get to Dawson City. Come on, get up. Buggy. Oh, oh, oh. After parting from the sergeant in Dawson City, Gill stabled his horse and pack mule and checked in at the hotel. Then he went to call on B.J. Seward and his daughter, Holly. Gill. Hello, Holly. Oh, I'm so glad you're back. Come on in. Thanks. Oh, I see you have a visitor already. Flint Parker is hardly a visitor. He's Dad's mining supervisor. You two know each other, don't you? Oh, sure. We've met before. Howdy, Dryden. Hello, Parker. Strictly a business call, I suppose. As a matter of fact, it isn't. I came to see Miss Seward personally. Any objection? Well, if you put it that way, we now, must... Now, see, here, you two. 
If you can't at least be polite to each other, maybe you both better leave. I'm sorry, Holly. That's all right, Gil. Won't you sit down? Thanks. When did you get back to town? This afternoon. I just checked in at the Victoria Hotel. Out chasing rainbows again, I suppose. Call it that if you like. Only this time I found the pot of gold. What? You mean you made a strike? That's right, and a mighty rich one, too. Oh, Gil, that's wonderful. Whereabouts did you make your strike? Sorry, Parker, but I'm keeping that information to myself for the time being. <laughs> well, at least it makes a good story to impress Miss Seward with. <laughs> Are you implying that Gil might be lying? Oh, no, no, not at all, not at all. I just think your father's too shrewd to be taken in by a lot of empty talk. He wants facts and proof before he backs any new mining venture. Don't worry, he'll get both. I have a number of ore samples and a detailed map of the district showing where I made the strike. Well, <laughs> maybe so, maybe so. If you can convince Mr. Silver, that'll be good enough for me. Uh, goodbye, Miss Holly. Goodbye. And in the meantime, uh, don't believe everything Gil Titan tells you. A short time later, Flint Parker went to the office of a crooked mine broker named Cass Hinckley, who had amassed a fortune since the start of the Klondike rush in various shady mining deals. Hinckley, a portly, bald-headed man with bulldog jowls, chewed a cold cigar as he listened to Parker state his business. Hinckley, a while back you made me a certain offer. That's right. I said I'd make it worth your while to tip me off in advance to any mining deals that D.J. Seward was cooking up. To be exact, you said you'd cut me in 50-50 on the profit. I did. I did, and the offer still stands. All right. Now, how would you like to get in on the ground floor of a new gold strike? Hmm? <laughs> I'd like that real well, Parker. Real well, as who wouldn't? It'll take capital. Yeah, well, don't worry about that. I can supply plenty of capital if the deal looks good. Okay. Here's the dope. A young gent named Jill Dryden blew into town this afternoon. And I just found out he's made a rich gold strike. Whereabouts? I don't know yet. He's being cagey. But I found out that he's made a detailed map showing exactly where he made the strike. Well, this begins to sound interesting. Uh, you, uh, you have a couple of strong uh, men in your payroll, haven't you? That's right. Swifty Drexel and Pug Hatton. What's your plan? Dryden is staying at the Victoria Hotel. Your men can break into his room sometime tonight and they get hold of that map before he turns it over to old man Seward. <laughs> They'll do it all right. That map will be in my hands before morning. And while they're at it, have them take his ore samples. Oh, too. why bother with that stuff? Because without the ore samples, Dryden may not be able to interest Seward in his proposition. I see. Which means you'll have no competition at all when you send a party out to stake a claim. <laughs> Smart idea, Parker. Smart idea. Gil Dryden was a light sleeper. That night, he awoke what? suddenly at the sound of footsteps moving about in the darkness of his hotel room. Hey, who's there? The guy's with these awake. Oh, it's soon firm to sleep again. Go! Light the lamp, Pug. Right. He's out cold. Yeah, but he may not stay that way long. Better tie him up and gag him with a bedsheet. Then we'll look for the map and the ore sample. Right. The next day, Sergeant Preston was seated at his desk in Mounted Police Headquarters when Gil Dryden burst into the office. Gil, what's wrong? Plenty, Sergeant. I was robbed last night. Sit down and tell me. All right. It happened in my hotel room. I woke up during the night and heard someone moving around. Too dark to see anything? Well, too dark to see anything clearly, but there were evidently two of them. One of them hollered, look out, Swifty, he's awake. And then the other one knocked me out with his gun. What did you come to? A couple of hours before morning. But they had me tied and gagged. I didn't get loose till just a little while ago, when someone came around to make up the room. Anything valuable taken? Yes. My ore samples and the map showing where I made my gold strike. All right. Let's get back to your hotel room and see if we can pick up any clues. Come along, King. Oh, oh, oh! A short time later, the sergeant surveyed the scene of the robbery. The room had been thoroughly ransacked. And marks on the floor indicated the robbers had gained entrance by picking the lock of the door. But although the sergeant went over the room carefully, he was unable to find any clues that might help him track down the criminal. Have you done much talking in public about your strike? None at all. Why? I'm just wondering how many people knew about the map. Well, let's see. I told Holly Seward. I suppose she told her father when he got back to town last night. And then it... Hey, wait a minute. A minute. I'll bet Flint Parker is back at this robbery. Flint Parker? Well, he's Seward's mining supervisor, isn't he? That's right. He was at Mr. Seward's house when I went there yesterday. He heard me tell about making a strike, and he knew I had a map showing the location. Huh? 
Well, the sewer's right-hand man, he'd find out eventually where you made your strike without stealing your map, wouldn't he? Sure. But if he felt like double-crossing Seward, he could sell that map for plenty of money. Besides, there may be another reason. What do you mean? Parker's in love with Holly Seward, and he hates me. He may have figured that by stealing the map and the ore samples, he could delay me in getting any financial backing. He might even try to jump my claim. Will you be seeing Parker today? I suppose so. I'm going to have a talk with Mr. Seward, and no doubt Parker will sit in on the meeting. All right. Now, here's my plan. When you talk to them, let on that the map that was stolen wasn't the real map. Wasn't the real map? I don't understand. Say that you were afraid of being robbed, so you placed a fake map with the samples. Let on that you have the real map hidden away in some safe place, and you'll produce it later on, if Mr. Seward is interested in backing your mining venture. Now I get it. You think that when Parker hears that, he'll make some kind of move to get hold of the other map. That's right, and when he does, we'll have the evidence we need to convict him. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult, and you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Pop Wheat, Quaker Pop Rice, and Muffet Shredded Wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Pack O' Ten. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Pack O' Ten, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. After listening and agreeing to the sergeant's plan for trapping the thieves who had stolen his map and ore samples, Gil Dryden had gone to call on B.J. Seward, the man he hoped would back his mining venture. Holly Seward and the mining supervisor, Flint Parker, Looked on with interest as Seward spoke to Gil. Well, Dryden, my daughter tells me you've made a gold strike, and you have a business proposition to talk over with me. Yes, sir, that's right. I've located a rich deposit of gold-bearing ore, but it will take capital to exploit the deposit. That's why I've come to you. Yes, how do you figure on going at this venture? Well, first of all, a survey party should be sent out to stake the best possible site and plan the mining procedures. After that, we can decide on the necessary equipment and estimate the cost of operation. I see. And uh, just how big a share of the mine are you prepared to offer in exchange for my capital? Fifty percent. Fifty-fifty, eh? Well, I might be willing to agree to those terms if the venture looks profitable. Now then, uh, I understand you brought back some ore samples. That's right, I did. You have them with you? No, sir. Uh, Unfortunately, I was robbed. Uh, Robbed? You mean the ore samples were stolen? Yes, sir. You? Have you gone to the police? Yes, but they weren't able to find any clues to who did it. You know, Dryden, I rather expected you'd come up with some excuse like this after all the big talking you did yesterday. <laughs> I suppose your map was stolen, too. <laughs> oh, no. That's where you're wrong. A map was stolen, but not the real one. What do you mean? I've been afraid all along that someone might get wind of my strike and try to rob me. So I purposely made a fake map and placed it with the ore samples. That's the map that was stolen. And what about the real map? Oh, I have it stored away in a safe place. Well, Dryden, I don't know what to say. Without having seen your ore samples, it's difficult to give you a decision. Oh, but, Dad, surely you can take Gil's word about the richness of the ore? When it comes to backing a mining venture, I prefer to rely on my own judgment, not to someone else's. You mean the deal is off? Let me think it over. Come back tomorrow, and I'll give you a definite answer. As soon as the discussion broke up, Flint Parker hurried straight to the office of Cass Hinckley. Well, what's wrong with you, Parker? I'll tell you what's wrong. That map your men stole last night is a fake. A fake? What do you mean? Brian was too smart for us. He figured somebody might try to rob him. So he drew up a phony map, kept it along with the ore samples. That's the map we got hold of. What about the real map? He told Stewart he has it hidden away in some safe place. And what's more, if Stewart should decide to back him, he'll turn over the map to him tomorrow. In that case, we'll have to act fast. Meaning what? 
We'll have to find out where the map is hidden. Get a hold of it tonight. And just how do you expect to do that? I think Dryden can be made to talk. Providing Pug and Swifty apply, apply a little persuasion. Just leave the details to me. I'll handle it. At that same moment, Gil Dryden was speaking to Sergeant Preston at Mounted Police Headquarters. Well, Sergeant, I did just as you told me. I pretended the stolen map was a fake and told them I had the real map hidden away in a safe place. How did Flint Parker take the news? Oh, it hit him right between the eyes. And the way he reacted, I don't think there's any doubt that he was behind that robbery last night. Well, that remains to be seen. Oh, what's the next move? For the moment, just sit tight and wait. If Parker is guilty, we may soon learn who his accomplices are. Well, how so? Now that he thinks that last night's robbery was a failure, he'll want to report that news to whomever he's working with. Anyway, that's what I'm hoping. I told Constable Ross to follow him and see where he goes. Good idea. Oh, that's Constable Ross now. What'd you find out, Alex? I started training Parker as soon as he left Sewitt's place. Went to the office of that mine broker, Cass Hinkley. Cass Hinkley, eh? You know anything about him, Sergeant? Well, I know he's made a lot of money by shady mining deals. Shady's right. What they say, he's been guilty of everything from claim jumping to selling salted mines. Yes, he's the sort of man who used any means to get advance information on a new gold strike. In other words, just the sort of man Parker might have made a deal with. That's right. How soon do you think they'll make another move? Probably not before tonight. Will you be away from your hotel any time after dark? Yes, Holly Stewart invited me over to dinner tonight. Parker will be there, too. All right. Act as though you suspect nothing. We'll see what happens. That night, as Gil Dryden was returning to his hotel, a sinister figure detached itself in the shadows and fell into step behind him. Before Gil could turn around to investigate, a menacing voice rapped out a sharp warning. Don't turn around, Dryden. The gun's pointed right at your back. What's the idea? You'll find out. Just keep walking straight ahead. And don't try hollering for help unless you want to stop a bullet. I'll tell you where to go. Gil asked no further questions and made no effort to escape but simply followed the directions which the man behind him issued from time to time. Their destination proved to be a ramshackle cabin on the northern outskirts of Dawson City. A glow of candlelight was visible through the window. All right, go on inside. Remember what I told you about not turning around. As Gill entered the cabin, he saw a man seated at a table with a bandana tied over the lower half of his face. Well, well, well. So you brought him here safe and sound, huh? Sure. Keep him covered. I'll tie a handkerchief over my face. All right. A moment later, when the first gunman had adjusted his bandana, he drew his gun again and said, All right, Dryden, now sit down in that chair. Maybe I'd better search him and make sure he's not packing a gun. Uh, good idea. Be clean. How soon are you going to tell me what this is all about? I'll tell you right now. We aim to get our hands on that map showing the location of your gold strike. Oh, you got it hidden. <laughs> Sorry, boys, but you're too late. That map was stolen from my hotel room last night. Don't give us that. That map is a fake. You got the real one hidden somewhere. Who told you that? We're asking that question, Dryden. You just answer them. Okay. Looks like you're holding all the aces. The map taken from my room was a fake. And I suppose you two are the gents who stole it. Suppose anything you like. What we want to know is where's the real map. And if I don't feel like telling you, you'll be making a mistake. Sorry, but I'm not talking. Why, you... You know what it feels like to get slapped across the face of the barrel of a six shooter? I'm still not talking. You will sooner or later. Don't worry. All right, Pug, tie him up. We'll go to work on it. Right. As Pug picked up a coil of rope that was lying on the table, the door suddenly burst open. Stop this! What? Oh. I warned you to drop your gun. All right, all right. I'm reaching in. I... Me too, Monty. Don't shoot some shooting, Sergeant. You knocked the gun right out of his hand. Yes, and I imagine it hurts. All right, Alex. Take the gun. Right, Sergeant. Where in blazes did you two Monty come from? We expected someone to make a move against Dryden tonight, so we kept him under surveillance. When your partner picked him up, we failed him here to the cabin. Did you hear what was said before you got in the cabin, Sergeant? Yes, Gil, we heard it all. We were listening outside the door. Now then, you two, turn around and hold your hands out behind you. Uh, and cuff them, Alex, till I keep them covered. All right. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. The bases are loaded. It's the last of the night. And two out. Here comes the pitch. He swings. And oh, it's a grand slam home run. Be right there in the ballpark and see a grand slam home run. Come out to the ballpark this very week as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, 
and Moffat Shredded Wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Packle 10. The ticket tells you the names of the teams and the dates. Don't miss out on the fun another day. Bring the whole family. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Pop Wheat or Pop Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Packle 10. Get yours right away. <laughs> Now to continue. A few minutes later, when the prisoners had been handcuffed, Constable Ross removed their bandanas. Oh. I've seen these two Jaspers around town, Sergeant. Yes, yeah, so have I. What's your name, mister? Hug Hatton. And your partner's name is Twisty. What? Yeah. How did you know? Shut up, you fool. Twisty, huh? You must be the gent who knocked me out last night. You can't prove that. We won't have to. What you've done tonight will be enough to put you behind bars for several years. Who hired you to get hold of Gil Dryden's map? Uh, wouldn't you like to know? As a matter of fact, I think I do. It was Cass Hinkley. Cass? Hey, maybe we'd better come clean, Swift. Shut up! You've done enough talking already. If you're counting on Hinkley to get you out of this, you'd better think twice. You'll go to prison no matter how many smart lawyers he has for you. We'll take our chances. Suit yourself. All right. I may as well take these two to jail, and we'll go pay a visit to Cass Hinkley. A short time later, Flint Parker was emerging from a cafe when he caught sight of the two Mounties and Gil Dryden escorting the prisoners to jail. He ducked back inside hastily and waited until they had passed by. Then he hurried to give the news to Cass Hinkley. All right, I'm sorry. Park, let me in, quick. Well, what fool blazes are you so worked up about? Listen, Hinkley. The game's up. What are you talking about? The Mounties have arrested Pug and Swifty. What's that? I just saw Sergeant Preston haul them off to jail. Gil Dryden was with them. Good heavens. Suppose they've squealed on us? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. Pug and Swifty have talked. The Mounties will soon be coming around to arrest yeah, us. There's no doubt about that. We'd better clear out while we have a chance. Don't be foolish. How far do you think we'd get with that dog of Preston's on our trail? You can't tell. We might be able to make it to the border. If we wait till they come around to nab us, we'll have no chance at all. We will if we're ready for them. What do you mean? You have a gun. Not on me. Why? Wait a minute. Here. Take this. I'm carrying one of my shoulder holes. What's the idea? We'll wait here for a couple of hours and see what happens. If the Mounties come around, we'll know the jig's up. What then? When I go to enter the door, you duck down behind the safe. As soon as they walk into the room, you cover them with that gun I just gave you. I'll take over from there. A short time later, the two men heard a knock at the door. Maybe the Mounties now. Go on the way, get behind us. Yeah, right. Sergeant Preston. That's right, and this is Gil Dryden, the man whose map you and Parker were so anxious to get hold of. Why, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Never mind bluffing, Hinkley. Come on, Gil. Get your hands up, both of you. Flint Parker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A little surprise you gents weren't expecting. Watch that door, Preston. Don't let him make any sudden moves. Steady, King. Parker, I advise you to put down that gun. Don't make me laugh. In case you two don't know it, Twisty and Pug are behind bars. Sure, we know it. I saw you hauling them off to jail. That's how we happened to plan this trap for you. You walked right into it. On the contrary, you two are the ones who walked into a trap. What do you mean? There was no need to send Twisty and Pug after Gil Dryden tonight. That map they stole from his hotel room was the real thing. The real thing. I told Gil to pretend it was a fake just to lure you into making another move. Hey, what'd you do with that map, Hinkley? Don't worry, I didn't destroy it. It's still here in my safe along with the ore samples. Not that it'll do Preston any good. Thanks for the information. Alex! Wait, Parker! Another mouth! I'll get him! I said, right! Oh! The constable fired first, drilling Parker in the arm. Shoot, Hinkley was already Shoot. jerking his Shoot. gun out of his holster. But Sergeant Preston saw the movement. No, you don't! No. The mind broke a reel back under Preston's no. blow, but he didn't let go of his gun. Before he could pull the trigger, King was on top of it. He seized the cook's wrist in his powerful jaws, forcing him to drop the gun. Get him away from me, Preston! I'll throw him off! All right, King, let him up, boy. Oh, for the love of Mike, there's something about my arm. It's broken. No pointing, Parker. I'll attend to your arm as soon as possible. You and Hinkley are under arrest in the name of the Crown. How come you had that constable posted outside, Preston? Because I had no definite yeah. proof that you were back in the attempt to rob Gil Dryden. What do you mean? You mean that Swifty and Pug didn't squeal on us? That's right. Well, so the only way to prove you were guilty was to let you convict yourself. As yeah. it turned out, you and Parker were all set to a blind. Well, I uh, sure am uh, glad you found out what they did with the map and the ore sample, Sergeant. Now I'll be able to get the backing I need from Mr. Seward. Yes, Gil. 
And those same items will provide the final evidence we need to send these cooks to prison and mark this case closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. There's Roaring Adventure on Mutual. Tales that will take your breath away and transport you into lands where danger is your constant companion. First, we take you far up into the barren Yukon territory of yesterday, where icy winds and howling wolves are enough to drive a man wild, and civilized ways are gone and never-present lust for gold. Now, let's go to another lawless world, the west of early frontier days. Not so cold, but which makes up for the freezing temperatures with trigger tense tempers, where the gun is a man's lease on life. This is a country which abounds with cattle rustlers, and where miles and miles go by before you see any signs of life. The West, beautiful but wild, a land which cries out for the hand of the law. You will never lack for adventure on mutual, whether it freezes you with fear in the wild Northwest Territory or singes you with the acrid heat of the Western Plains. It's all on mutual every week over most of these stations. Now, on a remote section of the Yukon Trail. Sam, we pulled that express robbery easy enough. With snow falling like it is, nobody will be able to pick up our trail. Don't forget that Sergeant of the Mounties that we saw in town. The one with the big dog. Oh, you mean Sergeant Preston. Well, don't worry. If he picks up our trail and comes to the hideout, you'll find a bullet waiting. Not only for him, but for that snooping mud of his. Must you hurt me? When Sergeant Preston and King do pick up the trail, they'll expect trouble when they find the crooks who robbed the express office. What they won't know is that when they reach the hideout, they'll be going into a trap that may mean death to both of them. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.